friends and welcome back to more farmhouse adventures. I am usually qu pretty quick with introductions and today I'm going to give a little bit of a backstory because I think it would just make a little more sense to help figure out where this video is going. But if you don't like backstories, I will put down the time where all the good stuff starts in this video. So you can jump ahead if you would like to. Now, when we bought this house in 2015, I knew I wanted to do the farmhouse style. I was already leaning my decor style that way anyway, and I had big plans for this house. Now, I mentioned before, lucky for us, it was a bank owned property, but they had come in and they had painted everything a cream and all the carpet was a soft beige and it was very pretty just not what i was hoping for i really wanted the gray and white everywhere and i could not wait to do that unfortunately the bank did not fix up the mechanical things that were broken and those were most important we had some drains to fix and things like that so we got started with those and soon it was spring and we had to get outside I am an outdoor girl and gardening is my passion so I wanted to be outside and I thought I would wait until winter to tackle the inside projects in the fall, I started having more hip pain and we realized I was bone on bone in my hip and I needed another hip surgery. So I had a total hip replacement of my opposite hip this time and I was rehabbing from that for a long time. And in the middle of that, we realized I needed my shoulder rebuilt. And as a massage therapist, he was adamant that I not do anything for nine months because uh, they don't want you to do a lot anyway, but because of my profession and the pushing and all that that goes on, they were concerned that my shoulder would not heal properly and I would not be able to continue to do massage. So. I couldn't do any DIYs during that period. So almost a two year setback, but I was getting new body parts, so that was a plus. And when I was ready, as soon as I could, I got a paintbrush and I started painting everything gray and white. I bought a beautiful jute rug for the living room and my modern farmhouse style was coming to fruition. The only thing we had left to do was replace the furniture and the furniture, as you can see, is a chocolate brown. Now, to be honest, I don't hate the furniture. I don't like that the cushions don't always stay put. But other than that, I really do like the style of it. But it's just not gray or charcoal or a farmhouse color. So I thought. And also, we did replace the other things like the TV stand or the coffee table. I had painted the fireplace in a nice distressed gray to go with the other colors of my farmhouse theme. And as the time has ticked by, we have just not found living room furniture that we are in love with. Trust me, we have shopped. We have shopped north and south in the big cities, online, you name it, we've shopped there. And there's just been nothing that either one of us want to throw our bodies on and say, hey, we cannot leave this store without taking this home with us. After a while, because we have dogs and they have toenails, it really took a toll on the jute rug and it fell apart. And then as things need to be replaced, I just got whatever with the idea that I was gonna change it when we got our furniture. This past fall, you might've heard me talk about a series of events that happened. We had a lot of things go on. My husband was involved in an accident and he lost a lot of time off work and he was injured. Pretty bad, not horribly. He's doing very well, but he still has his days. Our grandpa needed a simple surgery and developed sepsis, a very serious, sometimes fatal illness. And he required a month in ICU in the hospital and then a month in a nursing home. At the end of the month in the nursing home, they called us in and said, hey, he has to leave. His insurance doesn't cover anymore, but he can't go home. So this was just two days after my husband's accident. My husband couldn't move anything. And so we had to empty his house and make room in our house and he couldn't do stairs. So we made our dining room into a comfortable suite for him. 
and things just came in at rapid speed. Our dog had gotten hurt. She'd fallen off the bed and slipped a disc in her spine as well. And our well pump broke and we had to replace that. My computer broke and we had to replace that. And there were several uh, issues with footage that I lost and I had to scurry around to get new videos made. So there was just a lot going on throughout the fall. Then the holidays came in there as well. And I actually did retire to take care of grandpa. So I don't have the extra income that I had before. And so we came to the realization is, you know what, we're not getting new furniture now. And I've been pretty bummed because the living room has just taken on a lot of chaos, I call it. The rug that we ordered after the jute rug fell apart is not my cup of tea, but it was cheap and it fit the colors, so we got it. We actually got two of them. And then the, I picked up a coffee table and I was going to redo it and I never did. And we never redid the espresso colored TV stand. And so all of these things just make the room chaotic. And so I was pretty bummed I wasn't getting my farmhouse look. And not only the living room, but there were other places in our home that this situation was also occurring. So I finally sat down and said, okay, you know, we're not getting new furniture. What can I save? What do I love about this room? What do I not like about this room? Like the rug. I don't like the rug. The furniture is stained and it's chocolate brown. And one day I was going through my Instagram feed and I follow a lot of other farmhouse ladies and I was looking and for some reason I hadn't even noticed before, they had a lot of neutral colors in their photos as well, in their spaces. And they were beautiful. They were creams and tans and browns. And how did I not notice this before? And so, like I said, I sat down with my notebook and I looked at what I had in this room, went through some of the decor that I had, and I started putting it together. And I realized, you know what? There is a lot I can do this room to make me love it. And there is a lot I can do to the other areas of my home to make me love them. And what a coincidence that all this is happening right before spring. Spring, as you know, is a time of resurrection. It's a time of new beginning. It's a time of refreshment. And so this worked out to be just perfect timing. So I want to bring you along so that I could show all of you and inspire you that, you know what, maybe your space isn't exactly what you want it to be right now, but take a look around, see what you have. I was animate that I had to do this on a budget. I didn't want to spend a lot of money in this transformation. So I wanted to use what I have, make the best of it, and add just a few cheap little pieces here or there and maybe do some DIYs. And I really think that it's gonna to pull together and be absolutely stunning. I hope you agree. Now with all of that said, let's jump in and see what kind of a transformation we can make. And I'll probably end up doing this in a series. We'll start with the living room because there's gonna be some major DIY projects going on in this room. And this will be a long video. And so we'll just do the other spaces their own video. So thanks so much for coming along. Thanks for letting me tell my story. Let's jump in. Okay guys, we're gonna start out with just an overview of the living room and this is what it looks like. This is all the different colors that are trying to mesh together and just bring a flow to this room, if you will. Now this is the fireplace and this particular fireplace is a corner fireplace but it came with a regular surround so we actually had to do a lot of cutting to make it fit and i had already previously painted it gray this rocking chair has rocked all of our babies and i love it but it's getting old it needs replaced and this under this blanket is bear's crate now for all of you who have dogs how do you have their crate in their your room your space and have it look good and this is 
the furniture and I do keep these brown covers on them and for this upgrade I did buy new ones. I can remember back when all my aunts and grandmas always used to keep the big white sheets on their furniture and I don't like that but we do have pets and I do like to keep it covered so I use this. Now here is that entertainment stand. The glass has been broken out for years and we were just going to use this for a short time. Actually this was handed down to me from our daughter and it came with no glass and I was going to do something with it when we got new furniture and we just haven't done that. And this is the coffee table and of course you can see the rug as well. And the coffee table although I like it and it looks distressed that's from us putting our feet up on it. And I do like to have that when we're watching a movie. So it does need upgraded. And look at these pillows. They've lost all their fluff. There's nothing left. They certainly do need replaced. And the sofa here, you can see how both corners have just given up and they've just gone on slouch and they're not responding well. Now, I picked up some farmhouse fabric. This I got at Hobby Lobby using my 40% off coupon. I want to make pillowcases for the pillows that we keep in the closet that we use when we're laying on the sofa. And then this is my favorite. I got this at Joann's. It was on the end of the roll and I used my coupon. I got a great deal. Now, the stand in the corner that's where the printer ended up when it came out of the dining room and there's a little stand back there I want to bring out. That whole area needs to be redone. And again, here is another shot of the coffee table and the rug. And now that I see it, the rug really doesn't match. So here we are. Here is the before and I cannot wait to get started to transform this room and just make it more cohesive and enjoyable. So we had a really nice day and I took that entertainment center right outside and I got right to work. What I did is I ended up taking it all apart, giving it a really good wipe down, making sure that I got all the dust off of it. And then I went ahead and hit it with some Rust-Oleum Universal Satin that has the paint and the primer. And this was just bright white because I'm going to do a technique on here and I'm not going to do the inside so I'm going to go ahead and paint that. I'm going to have to paint it with the technique that I'm going to do and then once inside I need to switch the back because our big dish box is on the right side and it has a, a box on the back that has to come through there and without that it makes it stick out the front and so I'm just going to change the right and the left side and then I'll have that great big area where our dish box sets and all the wires can come out the back easier and then it will fit snugly in the entertainment center. Now that the back is all changed out, I'm ready to start the technique that I'm going to use. Now this is peel and stick wallpaper and I will link it down below. You get, it's 20 inches wide and it's 16 and a half feet long. And I really love this look that it's kind of rustic. It has all the colors. It's joining the browns and the beige and the cream and the white. and. The reviews when I ordered this said that you need this X-Acto knife. I will link it down below. Yes, you do. Trust me, several times during this project, I was very grateful that I did have that knife. Now I'm going to tell you that peel and stick wallpaper is essentially contact paper. And I have had a couple goes with contact paper in the past and it was not pretty. It did not go well and I'm so glad that that took place at a time in my life when there was no Facebook and there were no videos because it ended up stuck everywhere and there were wrinkles in my head when I had it in my hands I couldn't get it flat and I really wasn't going to do this project because of my past experience but I was determined that I was going to try this and see if it would be better this time and this paper was amazing to work with I can say that I'm so glad I went ahead with this project it peeled apart really easy and I don't know if you've ever used contact paper but getting the top and the bottom separated from each other 
yeah, always a hassle. But this did really well. And this is removable. So if you make a mistake, you can reposition it, which was great. And I think that's a good marketing. They use this. So like if you are in a rental and you're going to move out, you can take it off. I didn't leave it on for a long time and try to take it off, but it was repositional. And this plastic thing that I'm using here is a dough scraper. It used to say Pillsbury on it. I don't even know where I got it from, but now I keep it in with my crafts and I use it a lot and it really helped with this project and I did not have any wrinkles or bubbles or anything that I had to worry about uh, between the paper and using the correct tools it was a dream so I'm just going ahead and mark the top now now like I said when I am doing this I'm just doing this front the top and the sides I'm not going to do the inside but I put the paper here and you can see how it was repositional um, and then I left enough for the, f the paper to go up under the edge and steal that way instead of having an edge right along the top. I wanted it to be pushed up under there. And it did, even though it was being pushed up under in, in uneven surfaces like that, the paper really did stick well. I only had one spot where the paper didn't stick and that was on the lower leg of the entire entertainment center and I just used a little glue and it stuck but it did just fine for the rest of it now as I'm doing this I am also paying attention to where the texture is on the paper but as you can see, the doors have no glass and they do have this ridge on the back. And so I wanted them to be solid. So I have this piece of foam board from Dollar Tree. This was a dollar and I think I only used one and a half to make all four inserts and I just glued them in and they worked perfect. Now, before I glued it, I lined up two for each set of doors and I used my piece of paper before I cut it so that when I cut it, I made sure that my patterns were the same on both the left and the right, if that makes sense. So that the board going down the middle was the same width on both sides. And you can see here how I lined it up with the one on top below it so I could put the, the cracks of the board, if you will, in line with the other one so that when the doors were shut when the project was finished they would match exactly now doing the edges this had a lot of beveled edges and doing the edges was a little challenging if you like wrapping christmas presents then this is totally for you i am not a good present wrapper i am not and so this was a little more challenging because of all the different nooks and crannies but I did get it on there and it did look really great. And again, I paid attention to how the textures and the lines and the look of the wood was going so that they kind of matched the left and the right doors on each side so that when the doors were shut, they looked good. Now I'm taking Waverly chalk paint in mineral. And I'm going to try to make the inside look a lot like the top and sides because there was not enough paper to do the inside and I didn't want to get another whole roll. Once I was done with the mineral, I went back with the dark antiquing wax and I just added some more distressing now I'm using different markers to find what color I want to make the lines. And it did work out really well. It gave it almost the exact look. If you're looking really close, you don't notice that the inside is a different altogether item than the tops and sides. So you can't tell that I didn't use the paper on the inside. Next, I moved on to the coffee table and this was sanded all the way back down to its original surface. And after I started painting, I was thinking, well, I could have just did this a warm wood and white on the bottom, but I wanted it to hold up a little better because it is in the living room. We do use it a lot. So I went ahead and painted it 
While that was drying, I went ahead and moved on to the fireplace and started putting the white paint on the fireplace. My goal was not to have these three matchy-matchy exactly. It was okay because, you know, the fireplace would have been here before those were, but I just wanted them to match enough so that they weren't so far in color that it just looked mismatched too much, if that's a word. Once the table was dry, I went ahead and went back with the same mineral chalk paint in Waverly and I went ahead and started distressing the table. Now to do this technique, you just use a chip brush. Chip brushes are not completely even across the edge, so they do have longer wisp of brush to make different strokes so um, there's no right there's no wrong the more you put on the brush the more intense the color is the less you have on there the more wispier the lines are and it's the blending that makes that look most realistic now for here I have a lot in this area and on this one I just have very little my brush is really dry and just some light streaks and long streaks are the secret to this. After I have finished up the Waverly in Mineral, I'm going back with the Waverly Antiquing Wax. And this is what I mean, guys, about it doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of felt like my wax was too dark on this table, unlike the Entertainment Center. So I just took a little bit of water and went back over it and smoothed it out a little bit, and I was very happy with that look. Now I've gone on and moved to the fireplace and I'm doing the same thing with the Waverly. I'm just going ahead and hitting all the edges and then adding some long strokes to antique again with that same mineral chalk paint in the Waverly brand. Once I was done, again, I hit this with a little antiquing, and now I'm finding a book on tape, and I'm going to move my attention to just trying to spruce up this furniture. This furniture is the furniture that we're keeping, and we have to give it a little love and hold on to it a little while longer, so I'm going to see what I can do. Now, I learned this technique from... I'm trying to remember which of one of my house cleaning mamas that I learned this from, but I used to vacuum this and I found out from this person, and I, if I remember I'll link her down below, that using a stiff broom works so much better. You could absolutely go back over it with a vacuum if you want to, but this stiff broom really gets things off. Now we have a white short haired pity mix and when she came to live with us I thought oh a dog with short hair because our other dogs had long hair and that was always a mess and I thought oh short hair but her hair is very wiry it's bright white and it sticks to everything lint rollers don't get it off nothing gets it off so now I've gotten out my little green machine and I've got a little soap in here some vinegar because vinegar helps things uh, it sanitizes it also softens things and microfiber sofas have a way of drying real stiff so I put the vinegar in there to sanitize and also to make this softer when it dries I also add a little Mrs. Myers as you've seen now yes I could take these cushions covers off and wash them in the wash machine and I've done that many times but this time I wanted the water also to get down into the cushions and help clean the the cushion itself so I left them on for that part 
I'm just repeating the same exact steps on the love seat that I did on the sofa. And it is it amazing all the things that we find under the cushions of our sofa and how it gets so dirty under there. I'll never know how it does, but it sure does. There's a lot of dirt in there. Now you can see that I've changed my clothes a lot in this video and that is because when I got to this far, uh, well halfway through this project, I had slipped a disc in my spine and I was really struggling and on this day it was extremely excruciating. I was really struggling to wrap this project up and it took me a few days to get it done. Now I'm ready to make my new cushions and I am so excited. I am not a seamstress by any means. My sister got the gift of sewing. She is an amazing seamstress and I am so the opposite. But again, I was determined because I was on a budget and I really wanted to make this look good. So I went ahead and sewed my own new throw pillows covers and I even added a zipper now for those of you who sew you know how challenging a zipper can be but I made it through two new covers with zippers and I was so very pleased with myself I am so very pleased with the way the pillows turned out I just love them now I'm going to go back because the sofa has completely dried and I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to vigorously brush this fabric and help it to be soft and stand back up because when you do put that much water on microfiber it does, like I said, have a tendency to dry kind of stiff. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some polyfill. This was the big 32 ounce package and I got several of them at Joann's. They were on a great sale and I didn't end up needing all of them so I was very pleased. My sofa actually has zippers at the bottom of each cushion and you can see all the fiber fill in the backs of these cushions has really just sunk down. And I'm not going to take it out because it's clean, it looks good. I'm just going to go ahead and take my fiber and put it back up there. Now each bag comes with some sticks that you can use and you can use those sticks to help push the fiber up into your project, into the areas where you can't reach. And that's what I'm doing. I'm using those sticks to push that up into the corners and I'm just feeling as I'm pushing, now this is on fast forward, but as I'm putting it in there, I'm using my hand and making sure that it is spread out evenly and in all the right places just to be able to give this pillow more oomph. And look how great that looks. And you can even see, judging next to the pillow next to it, how it even lifted it up a whole lot higher. So now maybe that won't be pushing the cushions off as much. This one's really sad over here. We're gonna go ahead and stuff that one. And actually, I went ahead and did all of them all across the back of both the sofa and the love seat just so that they all looked new again and this made a huge difference in the entire look of the sofa I can't wait for you to see it I even went ahead and did the arm now our dog Maggie likes to lay up here and look out the big window and watch the wildlife so I went ahead and redid this arm as well And what I'm doing with my hand once it's up in there is I'm pulling this apart and just kind of leveling off so that you get a really nice firm fill and you get a nice even look. Now all that foam left 
a little white fuzzies everywhere so I cleaned those off and then I went ahead and put on my new throw blankets that I ordered and they were a really close match to the sofa not exact but that's okay here are my two new throw pull covers and I can guarantee you they are not going to show up in Joanna Gaines Magnolia home line but I am thrilled with them. I am so happy with how they turned out. And I have to share this. This is just your standard bed pillow from Walmart. And it's, um, this is actually says it's a queen, but they are really smushy pillows. They cost $2.50 each. And they fit a 20 by 20 pillow really, really well. I got this information from the Daily DIYer and uh, she does a lot of ones that she customizes from Amazon. And I have to tell you, I use these in our guest room for some throw pillows. And when we were waiting for our new bed, I slept on them and I love them. They are so soft and I've been buying $50 pillows and here these are $2.50 and they're amazing. So I've been sneaking into the guest room and sneaking them back to our room and using them. So $2.50, the mainstays pillow, and it stuffs a 20 by 20 throw pillow cover perfectly. And I even ended up making a throw cover for my spine pillow. So here we are guys. Here is the overview of the new living room. And man, doesn't it just look so cheery and so inviting. Everything is so much more cohesive and it still has that wonderful farmhouse feel to it. And it's so full of neutrals, but yet it's still very farmhousey. I didn't paint the walls. I left all those the same. I left the blinds the same all of that was the same now starting over at the very beginning where the rocker used to be we did get rid of the rocker and i brought that little stand out that was stuck between the sofa and the love seat and it has a great purpose there and then here is the fireplace and then i got this little chair from tj maxx and made a little sitting area in front of the window and here is the entertainment center guys it is so wonderful i'm so glad i did this and using that stick on wallpaper was a great idea guys so if you want to attempt that you certainly can and it will be a great project for you and it really is a great product to use now here you can see more of the coffee table and i went with these white rugs also from walmart and I spent less than 150 on a huge, I think it was a 9 by 10 and a 5 by 7. Now I found this lamp for $4 at the Goodwill. And the lampshade I had purchased already at Ikea for $5, it didn't fit the other lamp. And you could see back there in the corner under the lamp, Bear has graduated to a bigger kennel and we stuck it back there and made that the table between the, the love seat and the sofa and it works out very well. And then I went ahead and just pulled out some decor and this was all decor that I had. I didn't spend any extra. I think I did on the greenery right here and some Dollar Tree flowers, but the rope, I actually had made these eggs here in this photo and I learned to make them from Woo Guns and Roses and the puppy took off with the ball of the roll of rope and when I rolled it up I just simply put it on the mantelpiece and that was it so guys thanks for watching I have more videos I hope you will enjoy I'll place them here 